working on cleaning this out a bit here. Digging in the dirt, not a lot of people really want to see that, but hey, here's a crystal. There you go. Stick with it, get a good area, do your research, do your homework, study on geology, etc., etc. You'll be able to go into the ground out in the vast mountains and wilderness and just dig and find a crystal. Sounds kind of there easy, maybe it sounds hard. Down here. I don't know because you see how this is opening still, and I know underneath me is also open. That's awesome. I'm gonna probably just pry that out with a shovel. Just like it's to harder to land and show it. It's harder than it looks or seems to even find a good area. And a lot of good areas, like crystal producing spots, are known. And you're gonna have big spots all over the place, and people are gonna be there, and you know, that's when messes start happening, and it's just it doesn't become fun that way. But here we've gone out and found our own spot, and that's all I do. If there's a known area like Mount Ontario or Lake George, whatever. I don't go there. I never want to go there. I have no interest in going there. That's pretty amazing spot. So it's a good example here. We found this, well, with the help of Bigfoot. There's a backstory in Of course. Big backstory to that as well. Jeez. Imagine how big this would have been. That would have been massive. She would have enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah, might be a little too big. So a lot of people wonder how you find crystals, how do you find good minerals and areas that have deposits like this. So basically, you know, like you just gotta go out and look. This one started pretty weird. This one actually started looking for mushrooms. So we're walking in this area and we're actually looking for mushrooms when we ran across something that caught our eye. Jeez, dude. I mean, it's broke, but look at that. So every spot you find is going to be unique. This particular area here, we're getting some really large crystals, which is exciting, but also a lot of them are broken, like this one. This is all pretty much the same pocket. Remember, it was right here. Mm -hmm. And this is all, it's just awesome. Another, these ones are all broke, but keep at it, maybe we'll get more that aren't. Not all of them like this one wasn't. So like I was just saying there, a lot of the crystals we're finding are broken, but if you keep at it, hopefully we'll find some that aren't. And that's the hardest thing for some people. Like, this just isn't working for me. It's too much work. Well, then you're not going to find stuff. If you do, it's going to be one off and very lucky. I feel like I need to clean up like around where we've got all this stuff so we've got good, uh, good footing. Exactly. That's what I try to do. That's why when I had this little pocket, I wasn't so focused on it, but just getting everything out, you know, the way. So if you notice there, I've kind of made myself shelving, you know, little places to sit. That's kind of one of the keys to letting you do this for a while. You got to be comfortable. Be some stuff in here. I kind of felt like I had broken off of that piece, but nope, it's all intact, so that's good. But now I was looking at the. My Wait, there. That's cool. Look at that. That's cool. So mycelium is the white fungus that lays dormant yeah, in the ground that will eventually produce mushrooms, which is what started this whole thing. It sits cool. flat too, right? That's so it's right. like, yeah, it's like a nice like piece you'd see in a rock shop or something. We're in a jewelry store. It's just awesome. So that big piece there is just a big chunk of granite basically. And it's got crystals on it, which is called in the matrix. So these crystals have grown on that rock, which is also called the host rock. So people often say, well, how can you just find a crystal in the dirt? It's so weird. It's like they just come from nowhere. Well, actually, they would have grown on a rock like that, in a host rock in the matrix, usually in a cluster or a pocket. And then eventually over time, a lot of those crystals will be broken off and eroded away. And that's when you're going to find them in the dirt. So usually if you're going to find one, you're going to find a lot more. That's not always the case, but often is. Out. Top is like completely have to fix that. Big hunk of nothing, but good to get out of the damn way. So a lot of this work is getting the overburdened rocks out of the way and clearing the area so you can get to the good stuff, which is also just as much work. This one might be cool to see roll, huh? But it might not go very far because the shape.
further than we were probably thinking. Cool. Thank you. I just like to get the camera out in case you pull out something awesome. All right. You never know. Yep. Could have been. <laughs> could have been a real massive pocket under there. And I don't even think we're done. There's still pockets in here. Could be a cave system. Mm -hmm. We will find out. So just like with every shovel full of dirt, when you get these big rocks and boulders and everything out of your way, a lot of times you never know what you're going to find underneath it. Now, of course, you know, 9 out of 10, it's not going to be anything. If you're in a good spot, though, and that's where we tend to dig at, there's good chances you're going to find something. Fluorite, a hematite clusters, quartz crystals, clear crystals. I mean, the sky's really the limit. There could be anything, especially in these really awesome high mineralized areas that we dig at in Colorado. But what is really awesome to find is pockets. And that's kind of what I was saying when we moved that rock. It's like, hey, there could be a whole cave system. And that's important. It's important to stay optimistic like that. Because you know when you're not going to find a cave system, you're not going to find gold, silver, whatever it is, is by doing nothing, right? So you need to keep at it. You need to work hard. And optimism helps. You know, stay positive and just keep going. Eventually, you're going to find stuff. You stick with this long enough and you keep at it. Even if you're digging in crappy areas, eventually you're going to get onto it and you're going to find something awesome. Really? The bee's back again. Now what is the deal with this thing, man? All this just came out of down there. And why I'm saying that is because this stuff was kind of loose and it came out from this big opening down there. It's not like hard rock mining. It's also not just like digging in the dirt. So if you find a place with minerals and rocks coming up out of the ground, and every now and then you're going to get a loose spot, see this? that's a really good sign. That's probably a pocket that has been broken up or decayed over time. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. So it's going to have so cool, man. potentially anything in it. Be full of crystals, whatever. Whatever kind of minerals. It could be anything. Most likely what's popular in that area. You know, here we get a lot of crystals, smoky quartz crystals, a lot of iron, a lot of hematite. Uh, another area 10 miles from here. We're going to get fluorite and some really, really beautiful specimens of fluorite. But I have never found fluorite here. I've never found hematite clusters or nice hematite samples over there. Yeah. Getting crystals over there. I'm exploring a freaking cave system over here. So more than just being optimistic, the reason I said that is because as I'm digging, pulling out overburden, you know, opening up the area, I keep finding more and more little pockets. And now there is a difference with a crevice right or just a little opening or a crack and an actual pocket and you'll learn that over time a lot of what you're going to see are just these gaps and openings in the earth from the ground shifting over time that's not a pocket a pocket is where minerals came up in like lava or really mineral rich hot water these mixtures of gas and water and lava and all this stuff and that's where these minerals grew in these openings back you know 10,000 100,000 million whatever years ago and that's exciting and that's exactly what you want to see and that's what we're finding here. We haven't got into just one pocket, but several. Underneath me, it's opening. In front of me, it's opening. Out to the right, it's opening. And then I'm also finding these areas of loose, which, which is also a pocket. It's just kind of, you know, been filled in. It's exciting. That's what you look for. So Rock County has benefits, you know. All of us rock hounds, well, most of us anyway, not all of us. There's some, some bad apples out there. Majority of us, though, 9 out of 10, we're going to pick up trash and we're going to report anything that we might see, you know, if there's something going on crazy or illegal or whatever. So we're actually out here doing a good thing. And it's not just about rocks or reporting things or picking up trash. It's also just about being out there in nature, outdoors, and also you don't know what else you're going to find. You know, you can look for arrowheads. You can look for really cool feathers. You can look for mushrooms, uh, cool plants. In our case, you're also going to be looking for signs of Bigfoot, which do exist. Trust me, they do. They're out there. So, you know, you put all these things together on top of digging and finding these cavities in the ground. It's an awesome experience. You know, it's just an awesome time. So rock hounding is really more than just rocks. I think a lot of people have probably made the connection to fishing. You know, it's like fishing. Because you're out here, you could spend a lot of time, you could get skunked one day and get nothing, or you could get a bunch, and you can't really see them all the time, what's there. You know, you just try and do your best. But in this regard, 
I'm not getting a fish, you know? I could be getting a million dollar specimen, and you really can, that's not over exaggerating. So I was pulling miracles out of this hole. I had the camera sitting here and the battery died, so I'm not sure when it cut off. But um, you can see all the iron on this stuff. It's just ridiculous. Look at this. Just to give you an idea, if I wiped that. Let's see. So yes, you can find minerals and cool rocks in open areas and fields, but the majority of everything are gonna be in the mountains because that's where tectonic plates have brought the minerals from the deep down up, or volcanoes have done the same thing and created these areas. You have all these minerals there. And trust me, when you're out here in the woods, that's another side to rock counting. If you think you're alone, you're not. You're not at all. I can prove it to you. And if you ever feel like you're being watched, you probably are, and it's probably not a bird or a squirrel. Brush. Yeah, well, it's, it's not necessarily a toothbrush. But. Yeah, I have a small brush. It's part of my rock counting gear. Bring that because I want to see what this looks like. So yeah, it's like a mini, you know, for sweeping the floors, but a mini size one. Yeah. Hey guys, trust me, finding gold is just as exciting, if not more exciting, than finding pockets. And that's another thing that these little brushes are going to be really, really handy for. Cleaning bedrock, especially by rivers, you need a little brush. This piece here is loose. Put the shovel right there. Just pull this out. this out from down there. I was working it and wiggling it. I'm glad I was patient with it. So being patient is good. Another thing is to use plastic tools instead of metal ones so you don't damage the specimens. But we're in Colorado. It's a lot of hard rock, you know, rocky mountains. If you're using plastic, piece there. I gotta see if I can get out. So if you're using plastic, your things are going to get damaged a lot. You're not going to make a lot of progress. I've never used plastic tools. I've never had a problem. Right there. Oh, I got, got it. Uh, look at that. Wow. Really like that one. Nice. It's a fun pocket, man. That is a freaking pocket we have hit. stuff on it. It's a big one in here, just I don't know what it is, so I'm trying to get it out carefully. Let's see if I can get this out now. Nope, still can't get that piece. Go oh, this one. Let's see if this is anything. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Look at this dude. Holy shit. Cool. Look at look at yours and look at mine. <laughs> wah, 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 my little cluster. Holy! Go away, fly. That's awesome, dude. That's freaking exciting. Oh, it looks like there's still more. There is. Did you? Oh, you don't have service too. This battery is. Done, so this is probably gonna turn off. Greg's placing the camera for a walkout. Sort of big howl. Big hoo! Wasn't me. Oh, 
Oh no, it was far away. <laughs> Trying to capture the sun. Yeah, that's kind of what I was trying to do earlier. Alright. 